like eh. <laughs> things have been changing drastically things have been changing by the hour and the minute around here okay we're gonna be ranking beyonce's album today i want you to know that you need to take what i'm about to say over the next 20 30 minutes as unseriously as possible and like honestly this is the moment i've been dreading like this is the moment i've been just i've been so terrified <sighs> The 16th song on my ranking of the Renaissance album is Virgo's And I know you girls like to tussle. They told me that. And that's why I wore my bulletproof vest today. I know the girls love Virgo's Groove. And let me tell you this, this album has no bad songs. Virgo's Groove is objectively more than good. To some, it's probably top three. And I am not here to debate that. It's actually not that there's anything wrong with Virgo's Groove, it's that there's so much right with everything else. Like, it's giving cool in the gang. It's giving 70s disco. I love that. I love that. I have nothing against her, but I don't know. It's just not scratching an itch that some of the other songs do. Don't be scared. We're gonna get you high. So, I don't know. Maybe it just has to grow on me. Okay. That's my number 16. Again, it's not what she lacks. It's what the others have. Like, I'm sorry, there are a few diamonds in the room shining much brighter. It's just on the bottom of my list, I'm sorry. Okay, so track number 15 for me. And this is so crazy, this turn of events, you all. Thick. Ass getting fatter. He thought he was loving me good, I told him go harder. Ooh. She thought she was killing that shit, I told her go harder. Look at that alkaline wrist, cause I got that water. I do feel Thick is not super high on a lot of people's lists though, right? Like, I think I can say that comfortably. Just like I can say Virgo definitely isn't dead last for most people. Ooh. But that's how you know the album is good. Like, it's a body of work and people will have their feelings about it. So like I said, I don't know, it feels kind of dirty saying Thick is number 15, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't actually believe that. I consider Thick to be super corny, but it's corny in the way that Beyonce is corny. It's very on brand for her. With Thick, I feel like there may be songs you don't love as much, but you have to think about it this way. Imagine Beyonce announces her tour. You have front row tickets. The beat starts. The room is full. Beyonce's in the middle, looking good as hell in a unitard. The heel, the, the long hair, the, the fan is blowing. Like the fan is blowing. Hand on her hip and she's looking around. And all of a sudden, the room starts getting warmer. Everybody's temperature is rising. Like it's hot. It's hot in here. And you start to hear, ass getting thicker. Ass getting fatter, cash getting larger. Like, are you kidding me? Like, it's a slow incoming. Like, it's like, ooh, shit, that shit taking you over. Think about it. And here's the thing, that's the most memorable part of the song because it's just so in your face. But there are verses in there that are super catchy too. Cash getting thicker. <laughs> Ooh, like, come on, come on. That's that jelly, baby. Champagne and cherry, baby. That's that thick. That's that ball drop. That's that keep going. That's that never stop. So that brings us to track number 14, which for me today, right now, is pure slash honey. And I want you to know that I know that that's wrong that that is unacceptable, and yet here we are. So if Renaissance is supposed to be a dedication to her uncle Johnny, to ballroom culture, house music, black people, Pure Slash Honey is truly the embodiment of what Renaissance is supposed to be about. With that said, I have a really big appreciation for Pure Slash Honey. It's 
So I guess the reason I rank it lower is just because it doesn't have as many lyrics in it. Like sonically speaking, it's just not my favorite. Like I don't know what to say. If you love this album and you have been listening to it since it came out on repeat, then surely you're walking around saying random lines. Pick your fighter, right? And eight times out of 10, no matter which song is my favorite at the time, bad bitches to the left. Money bitches to the right. You can be both, meet in the middle, dance all night. Miss Honey, Miss Honey, Miss Honey, Miss Honey. Like please, please, she's made her mark. I don't want that to go unsaid or unnoticed. Like, but when we start talking about some of these other songs, I like, I don't know what she want me to do. I don't know what she want me to do. Some songs gotta be in the bottom. So, and let's be clear, this song is better than, <laughs> listen, a lot of the girls like to do this whole dance music thing. Oh, I have something to say about that. This is a dance album, everyone. Should I save this spiel for America Has a Problem? Save it. Let's get into number 13, which is <sighs> Plastic Off the Sofa. This one took me a long time, but when I got it, I got it. And you might be like, did you though? Because it's number 13 out of 16 tracks. I promise you I did. Like short energy was a little bit of respite. Energy was like, okay, grab your water. And then Break My Soul Church Girl came on and Beyonce said, okay, okay, okay. Like they're tired. They are not ready for this. <laughs> They've been listening to TikTok music and sad girls for the past four years. And so Beyonce comes onto the scene with Boy, I know you can't help but to be yourself around me. <laughs> yourself around. That was so bad. That was so bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I know you can't help but to be yourself around me. Yourself around me. <laughs> it took me a while to understand plastic off the sofa because there's a lot going on there. Ah, he he ha. Like that's how it sounded to me at first. And honestly, I didn't want to put plastic off the sofa at number 13 because I don't want to be fucking dragged. I don't want to lose my street cred. Like I don't want people to be like tasteless. Why am I listening to you? But I'm exhausted. I have to live in my truth. The turning point for me was when I actually tried to sing the shit. It became a challenge. It became, it became whimsical. Oh, like it babe. Hey, what's next? Come on, what's next, Beyonce? Get there. There's a couple lyrics in there too that I'm like, oh, this is so good. And that's when you have to also understand the context of the album. Who is this album for? Who was it inspired by? You don't need the world's acceptance, babe. They're too hard on me. They're too hard on you. I love the way you wear your emotions on both your sleeves. You can't help but be yourself. Because like in this home, where it's just me and you, we got love, baby. We got L-O-V-E. Cause like, I'm not saying they're ass because they're lower in my ranking. I'm, I'm not, I wanna rebuke that. People have died. People are dying. People are lonely. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Do you guys remember when Lil Nas X put out his album Montero and he gave his little speech basically presenting the album to us and it was like honestly you guys holy fuck no 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 <laughs> okay don't do this literally don't do this I I will not forget what he said because he and this is paraphrasing obviously but he was just like when I was a kid, honestly, I just told myself I was just gonna be with a girl and like I was just gonna be in the closet and it just was what it was and that's just what it was gonna be. And like, obviously <clears throat> Lil Nas X is who he is now. But like, <sighs> think about who the album's for especially when we're talking about little black kids, little black boys, little black transgender kids, like, well, little kids, period, like anybody. That was, <laughs> tripping over my own words. <laughs> 
that was when um plastic off the sofa was like oh okay yeah yeah anyway Jeez, Aaliyah, back it up. It's fine. No, it's okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, let's get into number 12. And this one I have no qualms about. Like, you're going to have to choke if you disagree. Number 12 for me is going to be cozy. I think cozy gets a lot. And I think part of the reason cozy gets a lot is because of the placement in the album. That's not true partially true it's because of that and also because the girls love a self-love anthem cozy gives self-love it's giving hashtag body positivity like i don't know that's just what i feel like and no matter how bad i don't want to hear what she has to say i know she's right back to my first reason the placement she's between i'm that girl and alien superstar i'm sorry it's the best like where else was she supposed to go you guys didn't tell me that uh, uh. <clears throat> Might I suggest you don't fuck with my sis? She comfortable, comfortable in my skin. Been thick, been fine, still intense, still here. That's all me. Black blood, love too deep. Dance to the soles of my feet. Green eyes, envy me. Paint the world, pussy pink. Ooh, cause she comfortable, like. I'm smiling begrudgingly. <sighs> Cozy is that charismatic person you know who walks in the room and sucks up all the air and you hate them for it, but also you still want to be around them, so you accept it. You tolerate their greatness. <laughs> all right, let's get into number 11. I don't know how I feel about this even as I say it to you. Number 11 for me is energy. So, like I said, if Plastic Off The Sofa is our chance to have a break from the first half of the album, energy is like, okay, I don't know the lives you all have lived. Surely somebody understands where I'm coming from. But it feels like doing Billy Blank's Tybo when you were 12 and he's telling you you can go grab a water. But, like, he's counting down the seconds. Like, okay, like, don't actually get a water. He doesn't mean it. He doesn't mean it. What about all my girls who got into high school and started doing insanity? And they're like, take a break if you need it, but come right on back. Like, come right on back. <laughs> like, they don't mean it. Jillian Michaels? Maybe it's just me. Fuck diet culture. That's a side note. But anyway, that snapped me out of my stupor. Um, back to the task at hand. Energy is giving that energy. All the stuff I just said. And I love it for that. I think it's needed. The build up into Break My Soul. What we heard originally from Break My Soul as a single gets heightened. There's really not too much to say about energy. I mean, half the song is not even Beyonce. Uh, and I really like those parts of the song. So, I don't know why. So then, like, the way I'm even talking about this begs the question, why is energy so high? I don't know. I just felt wrong putting it lower. I felt wrong. Also, if I was being honest with myself and you presented the album to me, all the songs I've listed before Energy, I would play Energy before I played the rest of those. Is that true? That's not true, is it? I fear Energy's too high. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. I fear Energy's too high. Mmm. Perhaps I put energy higher because when I first heard the album, energy was such a easy time. I didn't have to digest too much. It made sense the first time I heard it. So maybe I'm holding on to our glory days. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as we're aware, right? Who number 10. Okay. So number 10 for me is going to be Summer Renaissance. And it actually surprised me how popular Summer Renaissance is. Okay, there's a couple things that are tying into my relationship with Summer Renaissance. Because here's the thing. It's not just about whether you like a song anymore. It's not that simple. Just seeing the energy that 
Beyonce evokes in people, it's scary. I mean, her contemporaries, I can understand. Like, if I was in the music industry, I would be pretty upset too. Like, this person gets all this acclaim, doesn't have to really work as hard. In the air quotes, air quotes, the girls are mad that they have to promote their music on TikTok. Beyonce don't have to do none of that. She can go in the studio, put her head down, work, come out with something, and go back into her shell. The woman on TikTok who was upset, because if you listen to Summer Renaissance, at the end she starts name dropping all these designer brands. Telfar imported Birkins them shits in storage. This lady, I guess, does luxury brand content on her TikTok, and she was so up in arms about that one line talking about the customer base for telfar is so different from the customer base of birkin and nobody cares do you think beyonce cares if i have a birkin the fact that the birkin was tied to the telfar line is just telling you that she's celebrating black people because telfar is black owned and that made you mad i need you to unpack that so it kind of just gagged me more because the other girls were gagged like i don't know i don't know what to say it was a contagious gagging <laughs> i saw a tweet that said beyonce watched all three seasons of pose and paris is burning and that was really funny to me because i had the thought before i saw the tweet when she says the so good part in summer renaissance so good so good so good so good so good i just imagine like clouds dust storms and beyonce's in the middle of it getting sucked up into a ufo which then makes me think of jordan peele's nope which has black people in it jordan peele is black and uh like it's the horse thing i'm not saying they're intentionally connected because i don't even think they are it just is funny like it all works together and i'm gagged by that too the last thing i'm gonna say about summer renaissance the beginning i wanna house you make you take my name and make it saturate you sexy mother i wanna house you and make you take my name as in like i love you but also naming houses like you would do in a ballroom setting performance creating community like do you see and then she starts talking about designer houses like bottega louis vuitton louis vuitton birkin telfar like think about it I've said way too much about this damn song. Okay, let's get into number nine. Whoo! All right, Break My Soul. And I'm putting Break My Soul at number nine to make a point. I always loved it. I heard Break My Soul as a single and I understood immediately. I didn't need time for that, no. I don't know what else to say about Break My Soul. I feel like we've had the most time to get acclimated. Um, we're good friends. I, just, I don't really have anything else, like, Again, when we go from those first three songs we've never heard, and then we get energy, and then we go into Break My Soul, everything, if it didn't click before, it should have clicked then. You won't break my soul. You won't break my soul. I'm telling everybody. Mm. Stop. Stop. It's an anthem. <sighs> All right. I have nothing more for that. So these next songs, one through eight, these are the songs that I feel like this album has to have these songs. I will admit, number eight, number eight, you could argue me down. I'm gonna say that right. Like you could very much argue me down. So number eight, I'm gonna put move. The first thing I wanna say about move is this. Move, 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 move. Yeah, you gotta move, move. Anything you do will be held against you. You gotta move, 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 move. <laughs> it's the way she says, you have to move, 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 move. Beyonce's enunciation is absolutely incredible. When she says, house of Beyonce, make it raunchy. Like, that's not even close to what she said. I'm so sorry. I can't even remember it off the top of my head because it's, it's too much for me. Label whores can't clock them so obscure. Like, you have to move, like you have to move. She, you have to move. <laughs> Just listen to the you have to over and over again. It invigorates me. 
it invigorates me. Now, I will say, now that I've told you what the songs that came before Move are, like, you could definitely talk me down. Surely you could. Like, Summer Renaissance could definitely be bumped up if that's the case. Cozy could be bumped up. Pure Honey could, like, I'm sorry, I know, I know. You have to move, 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 move. Skirt off, make room. Everybody in Bounce. 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 And so that brings us into number seven. And I'm gonna need you guys to stay with me. America has a problem. America, America has a problem. And then we go into the beat. So here's the thing. When I first heard this, I had to look into it. This song is originally America Has a Problem, parentheses cocaine. And the artist who did the original song was 17 when it came out. And it's pretty straightforward. Like if you look at the lyrics, he's basically saying, yeah, America has a problem. The problem is the drugs. And we all understand now, Beyonce is like, yeah, um, fast forward 30 years, we still have a problem. It's me and my fat ass. <laughs> um, number one, I love that. But number two, again, we have to go back to the context of the album. So when we get to America Has a Problem and the source material is talking about drugs and the way it's plaguing specific communities, Damn, I had a deeper point to make here and I just forgot it. I just completely forgot it. Hold on. I, it may not come back to me. Don't get your hopes up. Oh my God, this is my favorite part of this song. Get your high up. No. No. Right. Boy, you know I grind. When <laughs> I pull up these jeans, you're mine. I've been saying that line wrong this whole time. I don't know. I don't think there was a deeper point there. I just think drugs have plagued people for a long time. And Beyonce made that fun. I don't know. All right, we're getting into the top six now. So number six is Heated. And I want to say, this absolutely sounds like a Drake song. I know Drake helped work on it. I could see Drake doing a couple verses on the song and then getting a singer to do Beyonce's part. A moody vibe singer. You know how it goes. I gotta cool it down. Heated. Heated. Oh my gosh, when she gets into that raspy voice, I'm done for. And she does it a lot on the songs I'm about to get into. I feel like Heated is pretty straightforward. I think it's one of the more approachable songs on the album, so most people understand the appeal of Heated. But it also doesn't take as many creative liberties as other songs on the album do, and so the payoff maybe isn't as high. But because it's so approachable and straightforward, I don't know, y'all. Like, I like to listen to Heated. I will play Heated. If I have the aux, I'm in the car, I'm not really sure what the vibe is of my audience it might be a tough room it might not people might not be receptive that day then i'll play heated <laughs> so then that brings us to the top five all right you guys i mean at this point you know what songs are left number five is i'm that girl and maybe that's not okay maybe it should be higher <laughs> maybe it should be higher because Here's the thing, I'm That Girl doesn't get enough appreciation, and I think it's because it's the intro song to the album. It does also have some corniness to it, the way Thick does. And like I said, I can kind of understand if you feel that way about Thick and it's not for you, but when it comes to I'm That Girl, I can't, I, I don't stand with you. There's so many moments in there. In fact, that song is what, four minutes long? And I would say there's about a two minute section within those four minutes that is absolutely unrelenting. I did watch a couple reaction videos for this album though. I kind of want to see what other people thought. And you can tell when the album starts with I'm That Girl. Really the whole album throughout, people are so confused on how to feel. <laughs> Crowd. You can hear old Beyonce right there. Do you hear it? Everything in my plain view. She's Midas, people. Everything next to me gets lit up to the golden touch. You see it. Oh, you see it. 
And here we go. Here we go. This is the best part. Ready? I didn't want this power. I didn't want this power. And then she amps it up. You know love is my weakness. Period. Don't need drugs for some free shit. I'm just high all the time of my mind. I'm tweaking. Period. On the weekend, I'm in descent. Let it begin. Pull up in that gun to the Cadillac. Feels in my mind. To be still, un American. I've been thugging for my young American life. Ah. Why you let me outside? <sighs> now I can breathe again. Bosky eyes off the wall. Oh. That's how I ball. Cause we are my sins. My own American life. I'm exhausted listening to that. And it was two minutes. Beyonce goes raw a couple times in this album. I think she does it twice on I'm That Girl. And it hits every time. It's never misplaced. And it just adds so much. Oh! She says, Bubba be sting. I've been saying Bubba be still. And so, I don't know, I'm just kind of scared that people hear this as the intro song and so they don't give it the credit it deserves because it's the first thing that you get introduced to and then so much greatness happens afterwards that I'm That Girl can be tossed to the wayside by many people and that's not okay. I'm That Girl is actually, Mm, I don't want to get inflammatory, but like Beyonce, Beyonce's done little better than that. <laughs> as far as appealing to my sensibilities, Beyonce has done few better than that. Okay, it is number five out of my top five though because it is the intro. So low key, I'm doing the same thing y'all are doing, but like I have a little more sense. And so that brings us to number four. Ooh, 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 ooh. All up in your mind. And it is a 2017 Rihanna reject. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But the difference is it's 2022 and Beyonce did it. It feels good in my bones. I can admit it's a bit outdated. It's not super fresh. Definitely not as experimental as some of the other stuff we hear on this album. Experimental is also a funny word because house music's been around for a long time. But also, Beyonce does fuse a lot of genres in one in this album, so it is kind of experimental. I will say I could be talked down on it. And like, as I'm, the more I'm telling you my ranking, the more I actually disagree with it. Like, there's no real justification for any of this stuff I'm saying. It's, try to get it all up in your mind. You give me that real good feeling that I need. Be careful what you ask for, cause I just might comply. So the top three, consistently top three. Maybe one or two instances where it wasn't. Number three is Cuff It. And I absolutely f believe Cuff It could be number one. <sighs> Guys. I want to go where nobody's been. Have you ever had fun like this? I want to go missing. I need a prescription. I want to go higher. Can I sit on top of you? We gonna fuck up the night. Jesus, <laughs> why? Bet you you'll see stars. Bet you you'll go far. Bet you you'll see God. Hypersonic, sex erotic, boy you got it, so hypnotic. I got time today, I got time. Like, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. Like, it could be number one. It could be number one. Why couldn't it? 
Anyway, I don't have anything else to say. I'm just reciting lyrics now. This is dumb. So let's move on to number two. Holy smokes. It's not what you think. It's Alien Superstar. Yikes. At one point, Alien Superstar was my number one song on the album. I did film an original reaction to this album and then I scrapped it because like the reaction videos I watched, I had nothing to say in my own video because I just had to take it in. I didn't, I had nothing to say. I had to just sit there and listen and, and think. So I would say those first couple listens, Alien Superstar was my number one song on the album. I completely understand if Alien Superstar is your favorite song on the album, but I will be honest, I can be talked down from Alien Superstar at number two. If Cuff It is my number three and I know it could be number one, then Alien Superstar at number two could be my number five. Unicorn is the uniform you put on, eyes on you when you perform. Hope Couture, label horse can't clock him, so obscure. Unique! Alien Superstar feels just like I'm somewhere else. I've been transported and I'm not here, here anymore. And um, I'm getting tired now, so let's get to the last one. Let's get a move on. Um, the last one is Church Girl. <sighs> which I also feel is one of the more approachable songs on the album. The first time I listened to it, I would say Church Girl would have fallen at six or seven on my list. And I'm sorry, like starting with the Clark sisters, going into a beat drop, and then saying, feel like I move mountains, got friends that cried fountains. By the way, this song comes after Break My Soul, where Break My Soul is basically like, I just quit my job, I wanna have a good time, I feel like my soul's been sucked out of me. And then Church Girl is basically saying, we are trying our damnedest to get out on the other side. And then lo and behold, at the end, we actually do. I gotta put my speaker on for this one. This is too good. Come on, come on, Beyonce. Hey, 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 hey. I've been up, I've been down. Feel like I move mountains. Got friends that cry fountains. And then everybody, soon as I get in this party, I'm gonna go at this party. I'm gonna love on me. Hey, can't judge me, but me. I was born free. Drop it like a thotty, drop it like a thotty. Hey. Let it go, girl. Let it out, girl. Tore that ass like you came up out the south, girl. Drop it like a thotty. Drop it like a thotty. Bad girl acting naughty. Church girl. Don't hurt nobody. <laughs> okay, let me stop because I have neighbors. You can be my daddy if you want to. You you can get it tatted if you want to. Put your lighters in the air. Get this motherfucker lit. She gonna shake that ass and them pretty tickle bitties. I'm a California girl, born and raised. This song makes me feel like there are things I don't know that I should. There's a lived experience out there that I haven't had and I am worse off because of it. <sighs> Gosh, this album's gonna be good 10 years from now. Yeah.